Rally here for another episode of Escape in Jamaica. Okay, so today's video is about some little things, some little minor things that as an outdoor fish keeper you should know uh, based on my tropical experience. Uh, I'm just sharing you with you what I have done so as to be maintaining my pan system for the past three, three and a half years. Stay with me. Cool. I have roughly 28 systems, right? I have roughly about 18 um, tubs like these, and I have six tubs like that, and I have uh, some other system at the side which has some small fish in it, right? Which totals to about 28. All right, so it's like the rainy season, uh, yeah, rainy season, and you know what comes with the rainy season, right? Uh, one mosquito, two frogs, and three, of course, a lot of rain. All right, so I have been practicing covering my tubs with board and plastic for the past couple of months, uh, primarily to keep out some of the sunshine within my pond system. Right? Okay. Since the the algae bloom in this. Uh, I call it gambosa, gambosia, or uh, better known as mosquito fish pond. I've actually opted to put this plastic uh, container cover, right? Uh, this is my, uh, have been covered um, for the past couple of days because I saw some amount of algae bloom there. And whenever I cover it like for about three, four days, the algae bloom kind of die out. And then now uh, I would remove the, the covering so that the plants itself can get some sunshine. All right covered with the board now rain is upon us and with rain comes the possibility that your pond overflow right so that's the reason why I have actually drilled some holes at the side of my ponds which should take out the excess water that actually comes in the pond as a result of uh, rain right I also have a, a built, I, I've shown you a, a video on this, but I'm just showing you again briefly. I also have a built overflow system. Uh, some of the ponds are, have become unleveled because of the, the soil at the side, right? It, it's like um, the more rainfall is like one section is like it, it's dipping a little bit. So I'm going to have to be doing some work there. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm planning to actually get rid of all of these and, you know, do something else. But whenever i get there i get there all right so this is the the overflow system and this is on all my 18 ponds going down the line an overflow system which actually takes out the excess water whenever the rain falls and it reaches to a certain level uh the water will actually be taken out by um from the pond the ex, um with the overflow system so everyone has an overflow system right so this is the overflow system for this and it, it's like that going down the line all right number two i still practice covering some of my ponds with uh lids however i am selective in doing that um versus if it's uh let's say made up of board you all know that uh for lumber to be you know become like this uh process like this it takes a lot of you know manufacturing and some manufacturing takes um chemicals you know to process the wood and all that to ensure that they are uh we call it um termite proof for a while at least so um actually placing the board at the top what it does um when the rain fall rain water actually soaks through the board and actually goes in the pond and that have a possibility of actually contaminating my fish um not necessarily clean it but stunt the growth uh, change the color uh find that fish can breed uh for a long period of time right so for some other ponds i had to actually take off the board the plastic remained but the board was taken off right a lot of rain fell between, uh, for the past what, three, four days. Um, so the ponds might look a little bit stirred up because rain fought, fell last night and um, they are looking like this. Um, my tilapia pond is still looking a little clear, right? About four dozen uh, tilapia, uh, one inch juvie in this, right? This is my 
this is my uh cool my cichlid pan all right my malarian cichlids i have not seen them neither floating nor swimming for a very long time uh i know that they are there i know that they are healthy i know that they are uh, okay but i have not seen them right and this is it with, with outdoor fish keeping sometimes they just don't see a fish right these are some um, convict cichlid fries in which i have and these convict cichlid fries are going really good uh, they are about half inch now as soon as they reach about a one inch let's say like uh these over here i will be i will actually be um placing those together uh, these are like a one inch yeah one inch um convict cichlid fries well truth is right uh but i can't mix i can't mix this set with that set because they will be consumed or they will be harassed right um i mean real beat down okay these are some more chromite juveniles uh, they are not ready yet to go with the big boys uh so they are here right? i need to do some water change because i, I accidentally left the, the the board covering over this one so therefore the water is looking a little tanny right i don't trust that tanny look so water will have to be changed very soon right and most of my ponds were left um uncovered uh my emboma cichlids as usually as soon as they see me they run uh see some fries in it i guess you might not be able to see them but uh i see some fries swimming in it and that lit that ladies and gentlemen makes me feel really really awesome i know that there are some more fries in this one this is a chromite cichlid pond and um they are doing good uh it might look a little bit blurry uh, i call it uh you know like a greenish but that's okay it, it, it works well Be uh one of the reasons why it's like that is because it's in the sun i normally cover it with the board but because of the rain i opted not to do that all right these are some ah uh, yellow peacocks um i have about, about five of them in it i haven't seen them in a while neither i am just guessing that they have spawned and they are presently hiding in the rock work right uh my angels and my gambosa are in this some gambosa i call mosquito fish i placed them in this uh one of my recent videos i, I shared with you that mosquito I, I don't want mosquito to breed in my ponds and there are some pockets that exist within the you know in the, in the this area within the plant um in which the mosquito will lay the eggs and they, they they will just mature in a little space and because the fish are down there they're not moving around they're just here uh what you find is that my fish don't see them to consume them so therefore the mosquito actually develop right so i need to trim the plants i need to store the plants i need to put some mosquito fish in it which will actually go through the plants and nibble on anything that moves right uh see some green water building up over here I'm gonna to have to put a larger piece of board there so um this is my severum a severum pan uh, if you look good you see a severum right there pushing out his head all right uh probably not gonna seem good he's hiding behind the piping all right uh, and this is my this is my mango on a pan right now my mango on a pan i haven't seen like let's say i haven't seen them swim really um in in months uh i've see, i know that they are there because i see them like they move at the base of the pond but they have not been like around like the emboma uh yellow labs right um they are in the rock work i don't know if they are actually um breeding all right so these are my pond system and rain is actually in motion and as i said before all of my ponds have an overflow system so whenever the water actually increases I come up here as a result of rainfall this should actually take the water out and the water is released here there it should in case um the water is rain is falling really really hard let's say a hurricane or a storm um i also have holes drilled at the side of my jump so as to get rid of excess water right although you want water to be you know a hundred percent pure it serves best in most of the time for you to actually uh, monitor that all right so this is my this is my 
convict cichlids pond and pink pink convict cichlids and guys i never know that my pink convict cichlids would get so large um i mean i see like five inches um convict cichlid in the pond i'm really i'm really really amazed uh i'm just really hoping that i can actually see uh my fish very soon um by building that space in which my uh, well should i say building an aquarium space in somewhere in my yard well covered in which i can actually see my fish swimming looking great guys looking good all right so uh as i said before it's rainy season right okay so it's the back of my yard i have six dots uh it makes no sense i show you what's in this because water is green i knew it all right but uh in this one i have jaguar cichlids right jaguar cichlids were actually played with my oscar initially before i actually move my um tilapia cichlid yeah water is green also uh no water moving just plants right there's a lot of algae there needs to be clean but i can't clean it until those fish actually go a little bit bigger which will not go through the the hole that the water should go through so i'm just waiting on that for a bit all right so i have two oscars in there and we have three oscars uh, one of these oscars Uh, Aska is really really getting aggressive. I wonder if it's planning to actually lay. Hmm. Really, really interesting. That would be cool. That would be cool. Uh three Askers, I don't know where the other one is at. I'm looking for it. What well, I had two small ones. I had about three, right? And I bought the three. I don't know what happened to one. I came home one day and it actually, actually, I said disappear. No, I am rotted. Cause then beat up the other Oscar. As if my Oscar have actually laid, they have actually laid very quick too, because um this the larger Oscar here uh was actually mated up with uh the aska that was really dust out i mean beat up really bad i don't know if that aska will actually survive uh, right now i have him in a small bucket and um hopefully he will pull through a, a small bucket with a lot of uh what i call it a lot of air being in the bucket yes 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 i know i'm i'm a tennis i'm leaving now um but you know wow i mean like guys this fish got a beat down uh this oscar which was the original mate for the larger fish was actually beaten down by boat um i don't know if it will survive it's frost out guys well a sponge filter and some air is being pumped into this small container hopefully it will survive boy 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 not even know so this never happened uh well this is how aggressive an Asuka gets, especially when it has a nest. Um, let's see, if it pulls through the next three days, I know that um, it's okay. If it dies in the next three days, I know that, um, you know, uh, those two should be stayed by themselves. Should be by themselves. Uh, you know, there's something wow. about this uh, pan, this tote well uh there is no filtration system not intentional uh my pump actually got messed up wire um exposed and it has a short and so as a result it started to electrocute well electricity started to come into the water and um i had to just you know park it or should i say um take it out of function so really right now i don't have nothing much filter in this pond i don't have a few plants i should get a a pump very soon but the 
aquarium, but they are the tote occupants are goldfish. I know goldfish, they are okay to a certain point. Uh, they like the green water. So, so far, um, I'm just doing what I can do until I get the pump. Uh, where I normally get the pump, there's no pump available. Hopefully, I probably I can get next week. Oh, and my Jack Dempsey's are doing good. Situation working. Back on track. Guys, a little update on my system. Tips and tricks. What I do so as to get my fish to be in the state of good health and, you know, go uh, as quick as possible. Catch you next time. Rally here. Peace.